Coming up on Techzilla, PS3 versus Xbox 360, screw gaming, what's the better home theater console? Mobile power, we go hands on with HP's Elite Book, get your Bluetooth stereo on if you must. SSD picks your raw file help, and of course, stacks of your viewer questions. Grab yourself some greens and mac and cheese to go with those ribs, cause Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by the national fight against drunk driving. Over the limit, under arrest. Who wants to spend Labor Day in jail? Go to Assist Express, support smarter with Go to Assist Express. And GoDaddy.com. Get your internet at GoDaddy.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best ribs in the East Bay, we got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll track down somebody who does. Now, I, I gotta, you know this, I know this, they know this, but you guys don't know this. We're taping a little bit in advance to work around the Labor Day holiday. So if some ginormous news broke out on Monday this week, well, We'll talk about it in a couple of weeks. Sorry. Yeah, that said, <laughs> yeah. props to our friends at iFixit who not only sent us a box full of tools, but Ooh. dropped us a collection, well actually for you and everybody out there, 200 repair manuals for 24 different game consoles on Monday. And the wee box of tools here, 54 piece driver bit, T8 torque security bit, screwdriver, spudgers, AKA plastic opening tools, metal spudgers, heavy duty spudgers, the legendary Xbox 360 opening tool, and a small <laughs> suction cup, which they say, with the contents of this box, you can disassemble virtually every game console ever made. Yeah, we're talking Wii's, PS1's, Xbox 360, pretty much everything under the sun Sega's at this point. Sega's Game Gear. Sega, yeah, crazy. <laughs> and as the nice poster says, repair is better than recycling. Yeah. And we agree. So, a million free phone calls, eh? Yes, Google is moving into yet another corner of your life, and that million free phone calls was just the first 24 hours of Gmail calling. In case you missed the new call phone icon inside Google Chat, or the big box that popped up inside Gmail to give you a heads up, quiet over there, I'm talking about news. Sorry. Google added the ability the to make phone calls from Gmail for US users last week. And they're offering free calls for the rest of 2010. Not such a big deal if your cell has a ton of minutes after all, but hey, they have cheap international rates too. You do have to download and install the, uh, the voice and video chat plugin, but that's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, at this point with all the other Minimal stuff. Minimal pain involved, yeah. Watch your back, Skype. They're coming for you. Oh, man. Run, Skype, run. I'm surprised Google just didn't buy Skype after eBay gave up the ghost with Skype. Google should have just sucked them in. Apparently, they decided it was easier to turn Gmail into the everything. Yeah, I know. But you still need to have a microphone and, and a headset to use it. It's, you you know, Skype. Got to do for something, yeah. Mm. Hey, I'm not so sure uh, Apple or Google, much less BlackBerry, are particularly worried about their share of the smartphone market. But analysts are predicting, claiming, boasting that Microsoft's going to drop as much as <clears throat> half a billion dollars in marketing and advertising alone in their attempt to make Windows Mobile 7 the success that previous Microsoft mobile operating systems have not been. Yeah, and uh, not that we're Apple obsessed or anything, but Apple's got yet another new product debut of some kind coming up September 1st, a wee bit after we tape this particular show. So if there's something exciting and we didn't talk about it, well, we'll talk about it. I recommend checking out the uh, GDGT, the Gadget Live blog Aww. for the Apple event. I'm biased, Is but Ryan hey. Is Ryan going to be there? He does the best darn live blogging of anyone live I know. Live blogging his little heart out. Live blogging away, just going at it. Man, somebody, somebody, Apple's going to like block the bloggers going They tried live. to do that at the last keynote. They tried. They tried to turn every, make everyone turn off their uh, their 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 like my fis and their Wi-Fi access. They wanted everyone to turn off Wi-Fi so he could use the signal, remember? Because uh, he was mad because he couldn't get the stuff to work. But that wasn't because they were actually trying to block the live no, bloggers. No, but they were trying to get well, you know, in effect, <laughs> they would have been blocking the live bloggers. I, I'm just saying. Don't do that. Truth it's me. to power. Yeah. <laughs> and from the why am I paying 10 bucks a month for Hulu Plus department, One Touch Intelligence claims that Hulu Plus offers, quote, 3,564 full-length TV show episodes that are not available from the free Hulu.com. Sound like a lot? Mm, regular old Hulu already has something like 24,000 shows as of early August when One Touch did the title by title count. 
Ooh, yeah. Talk about an ugly job for interns. <laughs> I think you're paying for access on your iPad, more HD content, mm. and uh, yeah, 70 odd episodes of 30 Rock along with lots of Cougar Town shows that you couldn't get on regular Hulu. I have yet to see Cougar Town, but the name stuck out. I they, have also they have this, yet like, to see Cougar Town. List of the shows. I was like, oh, so that's where all the 30 Rock is on my iPad. It's not about large cats. <laughs> that is not what it's about. True. And it's not about the next Apple operating system. One can only hope. Yeah. That would actually I be just really made funny. that up. I don't know what that hey, is. Hey, Brick writes in from Tejas. Howdy there, Veronica and Patrick. Is there any way you could maybe do a segment on Bluetooth speakers? Mm. I'm looking for a set for my office to use with my iPad. There are quite a few to choose from, and I would be curious as to what your best buy might be. I'm, of course, looking for the best good guy price at or around 100 bucks. Thanks, Brick in Plano, Texas. Yeah, the iPhone finally got Bluetooth A2DP, that's Advanced Audio Distribution Profile Support, uh, starting with iOS 3. Uh, the iPad launched with 3.2, so you should be good to go. Just remember, iPhone or iPad, a cable connected to your speakers will sound better than going Bluetooth. We Every can't stress that time. enough. It's stereo Bluetooth I'm not a huge fan of, but I can see where it comes in handy sometimes. Yes. Uh, Bluetooth just doesn't offer a lot of bandwidth for stereo, so you end up re-encoding and compressing your music so you can send it to those wireless headphones or speakers. Yeah. Uh, sorry. If you're working out, if you've got like Bluetooth stereo head, headphone, headsets, I kind of understand that. If you're breathing heavy and running around. Well, yeah, if you're like moving around a lot, you don't want to get tangled up in wires. Then it's nice. But for home use, it I mean, sounds like why ass. bother? Yeah. Why lose the fidelity for, for home use? Yeah, I mean, I got to say, products like Audio Engine's W2, it streams to Audio Engine speakers, which are even more expensive than the W2 adapter. They offer vastly improved audio quality over Bluetooth, but they're definitely not in your good guy price range of 100 bucks. Yeah, Creative's D200 wireless Bluetooth speakers typically sell for like a buck twenty or so online. Uh, though we've heard that you won't be able to control the volume via your iPad, which is like annoying. Apparently, super the profile annoying. is not quite yeah. matching up. <laughs> for one forty or so, uh, if you can find them, Logitech's Purify mobile portable speakers have a pretty good reputation for decent audio quality. I'm a fan of Logitech myself. Yeah. Uh, the Blue Ant M1 stereo Bluetooth speakers, Parrot's Boombox, and the DS1120 wireless hi-fi stereo sound system all promise better than average audio quality, but generally sell for over your price point at about 200 bucks. And that's if you can even find them. As near as we can tell, Bluetooth stereo speakers or a product category that is on the wane and disappearing rapidly. If you have a stereo with an auxiliary input or you got a boom box with an auxiliary input in the office, I'd look for a universal Bluetooth audio receiver. I've seen them from like 25 to 60 bucks. Uh, Sony's HWS BTA 2W Bluetooth transmitter and receiver, Belkin's F87 492 Bluetooth music receiver, or the ever so goofily named Micus Blue Bridge. Um, if you want to have some serious research fun, by the way, if you want to seriously get your feral Bluetooth nerd on, check out www.a2dp.info, which has listings of just about every A2DP compatible product out there ever. It's a little bizarre. It's just like a giant collection of A2DP stuff. Yeah. A cornucopia. People always think that stereo Bluetooth sounds like a really good idea. Until they hear it. Until they hear it. Unless you're running with really... it doesn't really sound like such a good idea anymore. <laughs> Especially Get if it? you're into really good quality recorded music. Yeah. Hey, still to come, a look at HP's Elite Book laptop. The Elite Book. But while we got your attention, well, let's thank one of our sponsors. Far too many people do not understand that alcohol, drugs, and driving do not mix. The message is simple, guys. Drinking and driving over the limit under arrest. Please don't put yourself or others in danger. Law enforcement officials will be out in force all over the country from August 25th through September 6th, getting their Labor Day on, cracking down on drunk drivers. Beyond putting your life at risk, you could cost yourself a bundle of time and money, jail time, the loss of your driver's license, higher insurance rates, and dozens of other unanticipated expenses from attorney's fees, other fines and court costs, car towing and repairs, lost time at work, being laughed at, mocked, and ostracized by your friends for being a scumbag with drinks and drives. Here's the deal. Drinking and driving can be avoided so easily. You can still go out and have fun. Just plan ahead. If you're going to drink, designate a driver, call a taxi, use mass transit, or find some kind of a sober ride program. Please, people, do not drink and drive. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, formspring.me. 
Life is full of questions, and what better way to get some answers than with Formspring.me, the site that revolves around users asking and sharing all manner of questions and answers. Once you've set up your account, you can find your friends using Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, Yahoo Mail, and more. Then, wait for the questions to start rolling in. You can get the ball rolling by answering questions that you have already been asked of your friends, or answer some pre-made questions from Formspring itself. Find out what your friends' favorite food and movies are, find out who would play them in a movie of their life, and where they'd live if they were exiled from the country. Users can post their answers on Twitter and Facebook, too, in case you really want your friends to know certain salient facts about yourself. If someone is asking weird or inappropriate questions, you can ban that user from asking you any more inquiries. And if your inbox is overflowing, you can always delete questions that aren't particularly interesting to you. Formspring is a fun way to learn about your friends and share a bit more about yourself in the process. Check it out today at formspring.me and look for yours truly at formspring.me slash Veronica Belmont. Ask away. I had the pleasure of carrying a Lenovo ThinkPad for a few months earlier this year. While the touchscreen on the T400S didn't get used much, the bomb-proof construction and quality keyboard... Oh, I love Lenovo's keyboards. They are so nice. HP's EliteBook series is another enterprise-class notebook, and it shares a number of features with the Lenovo. Pretty solid construction, a nice keyboard, all, actually almost as good as the ThinkPads. Uh, a built-in light above the keyboard. I don't know what it is about enterprise-class notebooks and built-in lights, but... Late, night, late nights on airplanes. <laughs> late nights on airplanes. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I'm a touch typist. Uh, both pointing stick and touchpad controls. And I don't know if you can see, that's also kind of a classic uh, ThinkPad kind of moment there. Mm -hmm. This is the EliteBook Mobile Workstation 84-4W. Uh, it's a bit faster than any uh, ThinkPad I've touched yet. Uh, Mostly because this $1,400 configuration came with a Core i7 running at 266 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and a 7200 RPM, 320 gigabyte hard drive. Nice. And if you're into the whole workstation, I'm editing CAD CAM, I'm working on freaking gigantic engineering stuff, or I'm an architect, NVIDIA Quadro GPU is an option, which means you have CUDA acceleration so you can get your freaky crazy real-time 3D acceleration on. So what are some of the downsides? Well, okay, it's a bit too much. The touchpad buttons suck. They yeah, have, they're really? like, feel them. Ooh, yeah, yes. not a fan. Not a Ooh, fan. Why did they make them so deep? I don't know, they, they are super deep. I ended up actually just tapping on the trackpad instead, and the trackpad's kind of small. Um, there's a bit more play in the lid than I'd like for, but Cisco Chang over at PC Mag says the Elite Book should actually be tougher than the ThinkPad, uh, and that it's been bombed with a whole bunch of mil-spec tests quite successfully. Uh, Spiffy performance, by the way, though, compared to the Core 2 Duo notebooks I've been using, the performance is actually stunning. Seriously, this thing is stupid fast. Seven hours of battery life, which is really nice. Uh, although the, the I'm going to say this is the nine cell battery, so it sticks out a little bit, but I can live with that for they seven plus hours of battery it's life. It's like a nice back handle. It is. <laughs> Just don't drop it. And an absolutely gorgeous 1600 by 914 inch screen. Uh, this thing looks really really good. Again, workstation graphics for the CAD CAM Mavens, eSATA, three USB ports, FireWire, an express card slot, a media card reader, display ports, uh, modem jacks, and VGA out. Sweet. I can't imagine using a modem jack, but it's there. <laughs> this is a top-of-the-line corporate notebook. Cisco over at PC Mag gives the Lenovo ThinkPad the nod by a nose. I gotta say, though, I wouldn't, mind, uh, I wouldn't really mind running Adobe Premiere and rendering video on either one of these. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Thumbs Although, up, two thumbs up? Yeah, I will say one thing, it's the, the brushed aluminum's kind of exterior does gather a little bit of the fingerprint action oh, if you're not careful. Yeah, I don't know. I still love it. I love brushed aluminum. I'm not just saying that because I like Apple products. I like it on <laughs> any product. You like the brushed it's a aluminum? It's particularly nice finish. Yeah, but this is actually the only thing it's missing that I'd like to see is USB 3.0, but the truth is practically nobody's offering USB 3.0, so it's got why a nice am I going to why? It's fingerprint scanner, too. Yeah, the DVD burner. For security. It's barely like five pounds, five and a half pounds. Yeah, not as big as I expected, did actually. Did I mention fast? You did, Very several fast. times, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thinking about dropping an SSD into your Mac or PC? Keep watching, our next segment is for you. But first, if you're in technical support, your clients depend on you for fast, reliable service. That's why you need the best remote support solution available. Go to Assist from our friends at Citrix. GoToAssist was recently named market leader in remote support by Frost & Sullivan and is recognized as the number one remote support solution available worldwide because it's easy, affordable, and secure. You don't have to pre-install software on your customers' machines and you can instantly start supporting them online. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit gotoassist.com slash techzilla. That's gotoassist.com slash techzilla for a free trial. 
Welcome to this week's freebie download pick. A free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, recover. You know that moment of dread when you empty the Windows recycle bin only to realize that you just deleted your favorite picture of Rex the Wonder Dog? Instead of bursting into tears and tweeting about it, run Recover instead. It's a simple and effective undelete tool that can recover your data from most types of media. Or restore emails that you delete in Thunderbird, just ask our producer, Roger. Did we say simple? Just pick the file type you want undeleted and the drive you want searched and click Scan. If you haven't done any major writes to the hard drive before you run Recover, you should be able to salvage some, if not all, of what you've deleted. Hey, we didn't say file recovery was a perfect science. With options for deep scans, recovering overwritten files, and even files damaged by a drive crash or reformat, Recover is a powerful antidote for the oh no's of accidental file deletion. Download and install it, people, before you need it. It's free. Leo out in Rio de Janeiro wrote in asking, I want to buy an SSD to use as a Windows 7 boot disk. I've had my eye on some 100 to 128 gigabyte OCZ drives, but I don't know which one to pick. The best seems to be the OCZ Revo drive, but I'm not sure if my motherboard can support it. What other SSD drives, <coughs> what other SSDs that cost up to $399 and has 100 gigabytes to 120 gigabytes do you guys recommend? Leo in Rio de Janeiro. Man, six months ago, no thought, automatic response, Intel X25M. Um, it was pretty much the all-around performance king in benchmarks run by our friend Anand Shimpy over at Anantech.com. He pretty much has written the definitive book on SSD and the hell that many early adopters of SSD hardware. <laughs> <laughs> have I've gone made you through. super conscious of it now, haven't yes, I? Yes, you have. I've become like the SSD jerk in the in the building. No, 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 no. <laughs> you are you are you are making us be excellent in our use yes. of accurate language. Yes. Or at least not duplicating language. In any case, the picture's a little different now. New controllers by Sandforce and Crucial are offering even better performance than the X25s do. Of course, with recent price drops, the X25 is still, well, it actually has become an excellent value SSD. That's not the same as a value hard drive. SSDs are still more expensive, or for the same price, you get much less capacity on a solid state drive. Look, if you're looking at a, somewhere around 100 gigabytes, and end recommends going with a Sandforce controller-based SSD. These controllers are used by a number of manufacturers, including one you mentioned, mentioned OCZ, uh, Corsair, and other world computing. One of the better performing drives that Anand's benchmarked is OCZ's 100 gigabyte Vertex 2. You want something larger, say a 256 gigabyte SSD, check out Crucial's offerings. Anand found that you might run into some performance loss in the long run if you do a lot of heavy writing to the drive, but that's where Windows 7 trim support will come in. For non-Windows operating systems that don't have any trim support activated yet, stick with the uh, Sandforce base units. For the most part, these drives run well under a pretty broad range of conditions, heat, cold, bouncing, sitting stationary, doing nothing, but you are going to need to keep an eye out on firmware issues that could affect performance, especially as the drive starts to get full, or if you have just written over and written over and yeah. written over and written over and things get messy inside well, of the drive. That being said, though, uh, <laughs> Intel has mentioned performance improvements planned for the SSDs releasing at the end of this year. Um, if you can wait, you might see both improved performance from Intel's offering with a potential of cheaper prices for you know all of those SSDs out there. Yeah, that's pretty much what everybody's saying is is new fabrication, uh, new fab lines are coming online. Memory prices are going to drop, and that should take a nice drop in the cost of an SSD. Yeah. Uh, speaking of hard drives, Guillermo from Puerto Rico emailed us this question: I have a 3.1 MacBook Pro, and it's starting to slow down considerably. And I'm thinking it's you know the two-year-old hard drive. I would love an SSD, but I was reading about the Seagate Momentus XT hybrid drive. Well, it's three gigabit interface work on my Mac. Can you help me with the recommendation? What do you think? Is it a buy? Will it speed up an aging Mac? Guillermo in Puerto Rico. Mmm, surfing in PR. <laughs> <sighs> hey, Guillermo, we checked out Anand's recent review of the Momentus XT, just reviewed it, and we're kind of shocked he actually liked it. His early tests of similar drives, he was seriously disappointed. The Momentus XT is really the first hybrid drive to earn Anand's approval. In fact, in his benchmarks, the Momentus XT performed as well as a 10,000 RPM Velociraptor Ooh. hard drive. That's really impressive for a notebook drive because Velociraptors are bigger, louder, and louder, and, and louder <laughs> than any notebook drive we've seen. Is it seen. louder? It's louder. It's louder, okay. 
stupid loud. Now, for those of you who may not know, a hybrid drive is one that combines a big chunk of NAND memory to store frequently used data by the drive. It's a big cache that's actually inside the hard drive that's bigger than the cache. The thing is that it's faster to get the, the data you want out of NAND memory than it is to get it off the platter, which is just like the CPU going to the L1, L2, or L3 level cache before it goes to the system memory, before it runs down the highway to go to the hard drive. You right. know, when you talk about relative performance speed thingies. Um, the performance gains you'll see will be noticeable, but nowhere near the performance you'll see out of an SSD, uh, a solid state drive. See, I always thought a, hard dri uh, um, a hybrid drive was a combination of SSD capabilities where it, it had like things that could be accessed very easily on yeah. the SSD and quickly, so it could have that you know, performance boost well, from an SSD, but still having the hard drive capacity on the other part. Well, when you're looking at your solid state drives, you notice that they're basically just big piles of memory that have to be located in your hard drive slot instead of in your main system memory. I mean, it's like, it's all, you know what I mean? Yeah. At this point, it gets really weird, right? Because it's like, there was like system memory, and then there was like L1 and L2 and L3 level cache, which is memory that comes in between the processor and the system memory. And then system memory went to a hard drive, and then they put cache on the hard drive, and then now they're putting gigantic chunks of cache. It's, yeah, it's essentially, it's, it's part SSD, it's part cache, it's yeah. part hard drive. It's all happy performance. Here's the thing though, your MacBook Pro speed, yeah, it's, it's just memories everywhere now. Pretty soon you and I are gonna have little jacks for memory in the back of our skulls. Oh, you don't? <laughs> it feels so behind the curve. Um, look, you, here's the thing. Your MacBook Pro, to get back to Guillermo and, and not my lack of hardware upgrades, um, your MacBook Pro speed is more than just the hard drive. How much RAM do you have? How clogged up is your install of OS X? You know, have you crudded it up with a lot of installs and applications? Is there weird stuff running in the background that you completely forgot about? Well, yeah, we just did our, our, our last go to assist thing that we did last right. week was all about speeding up a MacBook Pro. So go back and watch that episode. Maybe some of those tips will help you. Do you have four gigabytes of RAM? If your machine will support four gigabytes mm -hmm. of RAM, um, OS X loves memory to run and play in. But yeah, to get back to your actual question, the Momentus XT is a pretty good buy, and it will speed up your Mac if you do a clean install, or, or especially if you do a clean install. Just don't expect a night and day difference in performance, especially on startups and super read intensive stuff. For that, you will need to pony up and drop the cash on a solid state. Yes, drive. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to see if I could get through this drive. without going SSD drive. Because we're listening, folks. Coming up next, raw help. <laughs> Sounds kind of naughty, but yeah, first, it does. let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Do yourself a favor. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and that psycho you went to college with. You don't want him showing up on your doorstep. Private domain registration is what we're talking about, and GoDaddy's private domain registration will protect your privacy by keeping your address, your phone number, and more out of the public Whois databases. Remember, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry applications right now, so you can order right now, anywhere you've got phone service and data access from your phone. You can actually manage your current domains, do quite a bit more from that little application. And did I mention not just iPhone, but BlackBerry and Android too? Want to score the GoDaddy service at a discount? Of course you do. Do yourself a favor. Check out the code TECH12 when you finish shopping. Well, check out using the code TECH12 when you finish shopping. You're going to score 10 bucks off any $40 purchase or more. Don't plan on spending that much. Do yourself a favor. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy. You're going to find a list of all of the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3, and I bet there's one that'll save you more cash. Save the money. You asked, and the Texilla crew answered, and keeps answering. The emails keep rolling in. They do. I'm talking <laughs> Windows 7 support for raw files here, uh, though you did, Mr. Norton, fail to mention that you were running the 64-bit version of Windows 7. Which kind of actually takes out a lot of the... Well, you're not for nobody perfect. Yeah, you're nobody yeah. perfect. Okay. Canon, like most digital camera makers, uh, doesn't have much love for the 64-bit OS. No. As Lewis notes in his email, Patrick was wondering how to view raw files in Windows 7 Explorer natively, so here are a few solutions. Microsoft has a pretty good list of codecs from camera vendors at microsoft.com slash profoto slash download slash codex dot ASPX. This rolls off the top, oh, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Unfortunately, most are 32-bit only, 
And since Explorer will run native at 64, it can't load the 32-bit codec. Right. Um, some, like Nikon, have promised 64-bit codecs for a while now, but they have not appeared. Last but not least, you can use Windows Live Photo Gallery. It generates and uses the same thumbnails as Explorer and runs 32-bit. Once you load a folder in Windows Live Photo Gallery, it will generate the thumbnails that Explorer can use. Cool. Cheers, Lewis. Thank you, Lewis. Then, of course, we got uh, from Josh, Chris, Lewis, of course, again, and Jason. They said for $10, you can get the Fast Picture Viewer Codec Pack. It has support for a lot of different cameras. So that's definitely, it's 10 bucks. That's not bad. Not bad, I right? can afford 10 bucks. Yeah, it, 10 it bucks to see the beautiful tons pictures of, support. of my child. Lots of codecs, lots of cameras. <laughs> it's kind of like your, your, your general fix-it for this issue. Justin from Ohio says, I have a great solution for your raw photo issue in Windows 7 64-bit. Google has a wonderful free photo editor called Picasa. When you install it, it will also give you the option of installing and using Picasa Photo Viewer. This works just like the Windows default viewer, except it looks and functions better and supports all the raw photo formats that Picasa does. Hope that helps, Justin. Justin, Lewis, actually everybody, I, I, I have some puttering to do this weekend. A little puttering. Puttering. There's going to be some mad photo viewing this weekend. Yeah, I'm get excited. your raw on. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Sorry. I can't help it. Don's trying to decide what console to roll with. He writes in, longtime viewer, first time writer. I want to purchase a game console, but the new Xbox 360S, the 4 gigabyte darling, has me in a bind. I was settled on purchasing the PS3 Slim, but the $200, well, $199.99 Xbox is very enticing. I am not a hardcore gamer, he writes. I'm mostly interested in a home theater set-top box. I would like to know which has better features for streaming movies and upscaling DVDs. I haven't seen any real tech industry breakdown of the home theater specs. I've been to many forums and both seem to have its positive and negative aspects. Hasta luego. It seems to be the Latin edition. Yes. Although I, I guess Brazil wouldn't really be Latin. It's Maybe more Portuguese. Portuguese but, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> as you guys know, I might be a bit biased, um, but if you have an HD TV, it would just be silly to buy an Xbox 360. The PS3 has a Blu-ray player built in, and you can stream tons of content since it's a DLNA device as well. Yeah, I got to say. And it upscales it. really great too. You know, the, the Xbox 360 does have the advantage you can run uh, Netflix content without loading oh, a disc yeah, first, right? The disc. Yeah. The Netflix disc is a, is a PITA. <laughs> Uh, but the PS3 is a really awesome Blu-ray player. Sony has been super on top of, of basically making sure it loads fast, loads discs fast, loads menus fast, and actually duh, out displays gorgeous video. It's a respectable upscaling DVD player, and heck, just turn on media sharing Windows Media Player 11 and search for media servers, and woot, you've got media. Or you can run diversity, or well, I could list media servers all day All the live long, long day. Yeah, I'd, I'd roll with the PS3 as a console of choice for home theater, especially if you have an HDTV. I'm sure we will get emails. I'm sure lots we will. Lots and lots of emails. Feel free to put, put Bring them. Bring it. home theater console in the subject line and tell us why you would use the Xbox 360 or the PS3 or <laughs> your little SD mavens, the Wii. <laughs> Standard ah. deaf, people. It's all we need for no. gaming glory. No. For everybody watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us, we'll do it, and sometimes we'll ask you. Seriously, we need your emails, people. Don't be shy. Send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Where are the tools? I know. Let's repair something. Ooh. I think I was supposed to say his name, Guillermo. 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 We were surprised because NN's early... Uh, la, la, la.
generates and uses the same thumbnails that Explorer and runs it through. Blah. Enunciate Veronica. This is theatry. <laughs> Phone calls from Gmail for U US. Yeah. We'll pick up. Okay. Are you running teleprompter too? Holy cow, way to go, Roger. Why did everyone leave?